in the media press of today, we got some updates on the injuries mm -hmm. moving into uh, going into this week into practice and to the Baylor game. We got Hayden on the injury list, Carter, Shadur, or Shiloh, should I say? Hopefully not Shadur. Shiloh, <laughs> should I say, <laughs> on the list. Um, uh, any updates uh, from today? We know that Coach Flea now has let us know that it's a high ankle sprain from D. Hayden. Did uh, Dallin practice today, and then mm -hmm. when he's back, do you see him assuming his full yeah. role that he was in You know, I talked to Dallin just to keep him um, uh, focused, and he did a great job along with the trainers and the strict conditioning department as far as getting to where he is right now. You know, with a high ankle sprain, you know, sometimes it's tricky. You never know. He looks good as far as his drills, uh, his workouts. Uh, so we kind of scaled back early part of this week, but he's going to be included going forward as far as getting his reps. He's, he's done a great job for us mentally understanding the information, what he needs to get done. So now we're just going out there. We don't want to push him too fast. You know, like I said, we want to make sure that we go, go about the right way for our safety with that ankle sprain, you know, being able to be in a situation, get out of a situation based with his footwork. So we'll see more of that tomorrow. But these past couple of days have been real soft with him as far as making sure that physically and mentally that he's ready to uh, get out there and practice. So we got other guys to get it done, but, you know, Dallas is a great, great runner. So we, in order to, to have us sustain the run game, he has to be involved. Give us your updates from the injuries. Yeah, you know, high ankle sprain as – you know, anybody that's followed football for a long time, those are worse than the than the low ankle sprains. And you know, yeah, I've seen guys, and you probably have too, Chico. That I mean, they take five, six weeks sometimes to get back from a high ankle sprain if they're if they're bad enough. Um, Coach Fleet did say that it sounds like they were starting to get Hayden back a little bit, doing some things. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would not expect to see him this week, um, especially because I think that when you see what what Michael Welch and Isaiah Augustus did last Saturday you feel confident saying, all right, let's give Dallin some time uh, exactly. to rest that because we feel confident in these guys. And, and frankly, it, you know, uh, Charlie offered all had a couple nice runs there at the end too. So I think you feel good about that group uh, to let Dallin uh, sit. So I would be ex probably expecting Dallin to not play this week. Um, we did learn Tori and Carter, uh, you know, Deion Sanders uh, said this week, he's out, out. I, I asked a little bit later, I said, can you explain that a little further? And he goes, <laughs> He had surgery, and I said, "So is he out for the year?" And he goes, "He's out." He's out. <laughs> so, so we don't know how long he's out, but uh, I'm not expecting to see him this week. Um, it also sounds like uh, Chidozi Nwanko may may be out again this week. Uh, the bus played without those two guys last week, and uh, and got through it. Um, it's going to get tougher when you get into Big Twelve play, so they're going to need um, at least Chidozi back. I, yeah, the way it, they, well, the way they talked about TC, I. I I'm not expecting to see him anytime soon, but she knows you no. want to see soon. Right. And it just so happened the two injuries, like uh, the one that Hayden has and the one that uh, Chidozi is out for, two two injuries that I've had myself and mm -hmm. those things that lingered around. Um, I've gotten shot up in my high ankle uh, where I had a, a stress or a fracture at. I've gotten shot up to play those games. And that stuff will wear off by halftime, third quarter. And now you got to play with the pain. And the same thing with the AC joint injury, which yeah. is what Chidozi has. Right. That's going to be there for a while. So, you know, best thing for him, I think, is just uh, resting up and also knowing that um, same confidence you have in Michael Welch and IA and Charlie, you know, to keep uh, Hayden off the field. You could do the same thing with the confidence in uh, Anquin Barnes and Amari McNeil and all of mm -hmm. those guys up the middle. If they continue to play, as well as they did versus uh, CSU. So, you know, Chidozi then can come back full strength. Um, you know, once we play like a, uh, you know, one of those big games, Kansas State, Utah, and stuff like that, we'll have him at full strength rather than 75, 80%. And then he re injures that thing. Right. And he's out even longer. So, well, um, and, and honestly, another one too. I mean, Shiloh is obviously a big injury um, yeah. that, you know, Coach Prime told us last week. Nobody asked about Shiloh this week, I think, because we assume he's out. Because uh, he did say two to three weeks, uh, yeah. but yeah, you know, we talked about it last week, Chico. I feel fine about the safety position because Carter Stoutmeyer is balling, you know, and he he's played good football right now. And so um, I feel like they they always talk about next man up, but you look at the next man up at at those three spots we're talking about. They've yeah. all stepped up and they all played well in the absence of the guys that were not there this last week, and so um, that gives coaches confidence that. All right, let's not rush 
guys like Shiloh and Chidozi and Dallin Hayden back, uh, we can we can feel confident in the guys we have. And so I thought yeah. that was I thought because of that guys like Carter and Micah Welch and um you know, Amari McNeil, guys like that were so valuable last week because that mm-hmm. that's so valuable going forward. And they get a chance to step in and show what they can do and kind of develop in yeah. real time, mm-hmm. you know, on the field and nothing better. And it just so happened to have it's right up the middle of the offense and the defense, you know, the running back, the right. defensive tackle, the free safety right in the middle of the defense. But those guys have really played well. Uh, Stop Meyer said he can get some advice from his dad now, <laughs> who really played in the league at that same position. And uh, I think it's going to really pay off for him. And uh, he has the ability, I think, to be a draft pick in the league if he continues to uh, play well and get that opportunity. Uh, we saw um, possibly uh, when Shiloh comes back, we can see all three of those safeties on the field mm-hmm. together with uh, Stop Meyer, Sanders, and Silman Craig. So, hey. We got a lot of talent to continue to build off of. The future is looking bright. The arrow is pointing up, as Coach Prime and Uncle Neely says. <laughs> um, so, hey, you know, real, real, real quick thought because yeah. you mentioned uh, Carter Stoutmeyer talking about getting advice from his dad. How much of an adjustment was that practicing at strong safety? And um, in the back? It's a lot different. Just being at corner, you're not used to being in the box as much and seeing all that action. So it's, it's really it's a big adjustment, but it's it's been fun though, just being able to be versatile, being able to play multiple positions and stuff like that. Playing safety, you have a pretty good uh, mentor in your father mm-hmm. who played in the NFL yep. safety. What, what have those conversations been like with him? Oh, it's been it's been really good. He's always critiqued me on like the small things, you know, just stuff that like I really don't really use much at corner. I use more at safety. So just being able to have him just to call him whenever I have a question and stuff like that. Also, Shallow and Cam, they've always been good mentors to me as well. Yes, sir. You played quite a bit last year in your mm-hmm. freshman year. What is what is I guess what feels different about the defense this year? How is it different compared to last year? Um, I feel like we're more closer, more close knit as a group this year. And, you know, I feel like obviously we have better athletes than last year. You know, I feel like the secondary, we are a lot better this year. And then, you know, Coach Libby, he just lets us go out there and play. It's not as much checks as it was last year. So we can just go out there and ball really and not think as much. Yeah. What's the adjustment been like for you going from corner to safety? And- and you kind of back and forth. Do you like one over the other, or do you kind of like that versatility? Um, I like being versatile. Where they put me, I'm a ball. So, you know, a corner's fun, but safety, you know, you get to – it's different. You see the whole picture. You know, corner, you lock down your man for the whole play. Corner, you see the whole thing, and you could make, get people more help. You know, say you see a matchup you might not be, like, you know, comfortable with. You could go get that person more help, you know, and stuff like that. Imagine this situation for Carter Stoutmeyer. Okay, his dad played in the NFL at safety. Ed Reed is showing up at, at CU. Your coach is Rob Livingston, who's been coaching safeties in the NFL for the last nine years. And you got Coach Prime over there that's been a DB, not necessarily safety, but a DB in the NFL and one of the best to ever do it. Can you, can you imagine the coaching that that kid's getting? I mean, Man. all of them, but I mean, he's got his dad as well. I mean, it, it's right. insane, you know, some of the, the advice. Like, um, if you're not doing the right things, with that advice, then there's something wrong with you. Carter Stoutmeyer is doing the right things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he, he has the ability to do the right things, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, the IQ. So 